Hey guys, it's Doc, and today we're going to talk about moving a sprinkler head, and, but at the same time, I'm going to teach you a little bit about a sprinkler system as well too, so hold on. Hey guys, I've been talking about this video for uh, a couple weeks now. I posted up a, uh, a video previously on moving a sprinkler head, excuse me, replacing a sprinkler head. So I put that video up. Um, and I told you in that video that I was going to shoot when my irrigation guy came over I was going to shoot about moving a sprinkler head because if you're just going to move a sprinkler head You can probably do it yourself. We actually had a bunch of little problems going on here We had to trace wires underground. We had to find a bad uh, Valve inside somewhere. There was a bad valve a hidden valve. We didn't know where it was So we we're doing a little bit more complex things um, it's a good idea to use a professional, but if you're just going to move a sprinkler head, you can probably do it yourself. And so I'm going to show you how it's done. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, walk you through how a sprinkler system works really quickly. A real quick, quick explanation because I haven't seen a real quick one or decent one online. So let me do that first. All right. So I'm going to walk up to my main water source. And while I do that, uh, don't forget, I always say... I got about 20 different videos coming out over the next few weeks, so click the subscribe button, that, that little red thing right there. And uh, then when you go to our channel, I gotta open the gate. When you go to our channel, um, click the little bell next to the subscribe button, and that'll alert you when this absolute idiot puts out a new video. All right, so I'm walking out to the main water system. So let's explain how this works. Step one, if you're on, now if you're on a pump, it's a little bit different, but I'm on city water. So I've got a city water head here. This is where they come and shut your water off if you don't pay your bill. So that's the main, that's the main connection. It's usually by the street. Somewhere in this general area, we didn't find it yesterday. I still have to find it. Somewhere in this area, there generally is a main shutoff for your sprinkler system. Almost all companies put it within a few feet of this right here. And so you can shut off the main water to your sprinkler system without shutting off the water to your house. Then at some point from there, you're gonna to start to hit control valves. You're gonna have these little things. And those are little control valves. And there's a solenoid on there. And when the switch inside says go on, it goes click and it opens up that valve. So that's how that station, now this one, controls all these valves on here all these heads on here what keep walking and we trace the wire and the wire in the pump goes up to here to this next one so you got another one in here this one runs all these heads on this side so basically each valve station each valve station will control a certain number of heads now let's take away the mystery of what's under the ground Ooh, spooky. Okay, so I'm gonna go real high tech on you here. That spoon is the main water valve at the street. From there, you're gonna run, there is basically PVC pipe underground, and that goes up usually to your valve station. This pipe will run underground and run throughout your yard in different areas. So you'll basically have either three quarter inch or one inch PVC, schedule 40 usually. Now, what they're gonna do is at certain points, they're gonna tee into this PVC and what they're gonna do is they're gonna put some kind of little valve in here, but basically these little a connector valve like this, something that these things can go into. These little junctions, these little parts right here are for your funny hose or your flexible irrigation hose. And this is the flexible irrigation hose, they call it funny hose. And that's where these little things clamp onto. So this little part, so when it's pushed all the way in, that's what it looks like. So essentially you have a, a, a flexible irrigation hose coming off PVC to this little head here. Now what screws onto here? Very simply, what's on the bottom of your sprinkler head? Hey, Linda, get away from my knife. She's always involved. Guess what screws into that? This screws into that. And so basically, that's all you have. 
Now, doesn't that make it simple? That really helps you understand how simple an irrigation system is. So you have a main water pump, pump you have a main water pump. After your main water pump, you're gonna run from your main water from the street, you're gonna run to a valve and it's gonna continue on. From the PVC, you're gonna have flexible hose. At the end of the flexible hose, you put a fitting and you put your sprinkler head on it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So that is the overall way that a sprinkler system works. And then each one of those valves that I showed you is actually a control station. So if you have a on your control, you have a one, two, three, four. Each one of those valves is one of those stations. So uh, that's kind of how PVC system works or, or irrigation system works. Whether it's a hunter, whether it's a rainbird, there's going to be a little bit of a difference, not a whole lot. Um, but that's the basics of it. The other thing I did want to talk about too is on these valves, each one of these valves usually has usually has some kind of manual shutoff. Now, what was interesting is we couldn't figure out on these old valves I have, we couldn't figure it out, but I finally did. Okay, so here's a station. Here's a valve which we didn't know that this was here. We actually traced it with a trace finder that he hooks up to the system and it puts off a signal. And he, fired, he followed this wire all the way across the yard. So when you open up this valve cover, you're going to see a valve. You'll probably see grass growing inside of it. On this one, this works just like a hose spigot. So you see this round thing? If you wanna, if you wanna shut off those stations, you go ahead and turn it down. Turn that down, it just rotates down and you turn it off. Just like a regular hose, do it counterclockwise and it opens it up. I'm gonna do it. Honestly, we couldn't even, we couldn't even really identify these old valves. Um, we think they're old hunter ones. We put in a new Rainbird one over here too. But at some point, there's some kind of valve or manual on or off switch on those things that you can turn them on or off. So if you have a big blowout, you can figure out which station it's on and you can go ahead and shut it off per station. That's important to know. Okay, so here's the footage that I'm gonna show you. This is the finished product. I want you to look at how stupid this is. So if you were gonna put a sprinkler head, where would you put it? So you want that sprinkler to go over here, come around, and then shoot back over this way too. So obviously you'd put your sprinkler head here while the old sprinkler was right there. <laughs> now, is that the stupidest thing you've ever seen? Well, keep, we'll keep going. Same thing, there's another sprinkler head over here. So when this sprinkler head's shooting this way, right along the roses, and I can actually turn it and have it go over this way, bleed over, so I can have it go back and forth here. Guess where that head was? Well, you can see. That head was way down here. Why? Stupid. So we moved a bunch of these heads like that. Now there's the pump station. This was a mystery. This was a number six. We didn't know what done. That's a long story. I'm not even gonna go into that. Um, we cannot figure out where number six is back here. We think they actually stopped the irrigation system because of the pool construction. And they said, well, we're gonna hold off on a six station because we can't find anything. So that was one of the hour long mysteries of yesterday. We spent trying to uncover the mystery of that, um, that last valve station. So do you need a professional to come do this? If you're just gonna move sprinkler heads, no. Um, but if you start digging, you find broken pipes and so forth. Yes, you can do it yourself. It's just basically P PVC stuff. But once you get into valves and stuff like that, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you where I think it's nice. Let me get in the shade for a second. I think it's important to have a professional come out to answer questions, to look over your system and tell you what is actually going on, what is where. That was the biggest thing. I had Jared come out actually twice, mainly because we had to figure things out. We didn't know what was broken, what was working. We had to trace electrical. So there were certain things where having a professional come out especially if you move into a house and you don't know the system, he can walk you through that system. As an example, in Georgia, South Carolina, in the southern areas, a lot of these systems don't have winter bleeds. So there is no winterization. You don't winterize, um, you really don't winterize systems here. You don't winterize irrigation systems in the south. There's just no need. Um, 
But anyways, let me roll that footage from yesterday. It's not the greatest stuff, but it'll show us it'll show us working on it. Hey guys, so we're out here with uh, Jarrett, right? Yes, sir. See, I got his name right. Jarrett from Oconee Irrigation in Georgia. A little promo there for him. But let me tell you what we're doing here. So the guy that makes kitchen cabinets installed my sprinkler system out here. He's an absolute idiot. So this is the sprinkler head that's supposed to water back over here. It makes absolutely no sense. So what we're doing is, is we're taking this sprinkler head and we're moving it up to here so that we can shoot a line along here so that that sprinkler head can properly cover this. Why the hell you put a sprinkler head way over here? I don't know. So anyways, we're just punching holes in here as we go along. And as we punch holes, we're refilling. But today what I wanted to do is, uh, what's that What's that pipe called again? Uh, funny pipe. Funny pipe. There's Jared, just so you know. <clears throat> He's the young, good looking one. I'm the old, <laughs> bald, ugly, fat one. So we're using a funny pipe today and we're just running this along. There is some PVC in here and then there's junction points where you actually run the funny pipe into here and then you break into it. And we're reinstalling the head over here just so you can see that. But one thing I really wanted to talk about today was is how to repair this. So I'm going to show you how to sort of fix once you dig up these sod patches. I'm going to show you how to fix this because we got quite a few heads to do. I think we're moving five heads today. So what I've done is if you saw my last video, we were talking about making up a mix. Oh, making up a mix to repair bald spots. And I'm going to use the same thing. Now, this is just potting soil in a ratio of two bags of potting soil to one bag of pure fine sand. The reason why I use potting soil is because if you use other soil, it'll have wood bark and all kinds of crap in it. You don't want that. You can look for, go to the sale flyer, see what's on sale and buy that potting soil. So I've done that. So now instead of just using the clay here to refill these holes, what I'm actually going to do is, is I'm going to cut the sod off. So let me see if I can give you an example gotta remember where the shade is so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this whole part of the way and then I'm gonna cut the sod off a little bit and then I'm gonna put some of that light soil on top so that I can shape it and then put it back on and I'll probably show you me doing that all right so you got a valve sitting here and it's kind of like okay where what you got main PVC run into this somehow probably main PVC running up here or we don't really know we're having to discover this as we go the funny pipe let me show you this is the funny pipe that he's got and this is the stuff the flexible stuff that they'll actually run from the PVC over to the sprinkler head that's how it goes into that so you can see he's shoving that little fitting on there these are called um Marlex barb fittings for funny pipe. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's joining that one into the other funny pipe that's already existing in the ground. So we know the funny pipe is running out here to a PVC tie-in somewhere. If it's a customer, he won't answer. If it's his girlfriend, he'll answer. It. <laughs> so that's what we're basically doing. So old head here run the funny pipe up we're going to move it here it's a pretty simple process once he cuts it this little piece here is going to go into the elbow it's going to go into the funny pipe and that's what the sprinkler head screws into let me show you so this is actually a fairly new one believe it or not i put this one in eight months ago i think so this one screws into the bottom of your sprinkler head here and then this piece goes into that funny pipe so that's how it works. Let me zoom in just a tad. Okay, so Jared had a note here. I can't see it because of the shading here. So he was talking about, what do you like to do? Um, I like to put this Marlex fitting onto the bar 90 to make a swing joint so you can um, so you can make the, the head. Um, it's just easier to move the head. Back so and forth. Back and forth. Right, so if I want to have, as an example, <clears throat> let's say my sprinkler head is straight up but I want to tilt it back a little bit I can actually do that because he's using the dual he's using the swing joint basically he's putting in two elbows in there a male and female elbow in there and that'll just allow him to adjust it it's easier on him 
when he installs it, but it also gives the homeowner a little, you can dig it out a little bit and adjust that sprinkler head. I was telling Jarrett last week we were doing the front yard and there were a couple heads because I'm shooting uphill, I actually like to have the heads sort of leaning back a little bit to shoot towards the uphill. Otherwise they're sort of point shooting directly into the grass. So when he was putting them in, he actually had the heads tilted back a little bit. And that's an easy adjustment. You can just dig a little dirt out, push it forward and fill in behind it. It's a real simple little adjustment. Okay, so uh, in order to sort of help this along and to make this a better repair, normally you would go through here and throw just some of that clay back in here. But what I'm gonna do is to help this along a little bit, I'm just gonna come down and just take a little bit of this off, flatten this off a little bit sort of massage these roots a little bit, open them up. I'm gonna put a little bit of this clay stuff back in here. Oh, I got dogs everywhere now. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this clay back in here. So I've got a little bit of this clay, but if I put this hole back on here like this, it's gonna fall back in. But I want sort of healthy soil under here. So I'm gonna grab some of this mixture I've got. <coughs> I'm gonna kind of overfill it at first. I'm gonna tamp it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna lay this back on top. Just like that. So now, the nice thing, the nice thing about having this loose soil in here is I can go in here and I can take a little bit of this off. I can keep taking this down a little bit, take this down a little bit until it gets to the point that I'm pretty comfortable with how it's fitting, just like this. You got your tamper, and I'm just gonna tamp it down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of this good stuff, put it around the edges. Now it's almost impossible to see where that repair is. So you can see that instead of putting that hard clay back in here because I'm using this light soil mix, it's real easy for me to evenly shape and evenly move that around. Plus, I've got quality soil up under here, breathable soil for those roots to reestablish. Whew. Okay, so let me show you the first finished head. So that's where the head originally was, and we moved it all the way up over here. So there's the new head. Anyways, guys, hope that video helped with moving the sprinkler head and a little bit of info. Doc, how you doing?